So I wanted to share in this video three communication techniques or tips that can really help you manage working from home and your relationships so that you are thriving during this time rather than just surviving. So I've just been thinking about what of the best communication tips can I share in this video out of my 18 communication success principles that I take couples through in my counselling program. And I've decided to choose three that I think will be most helpful at the moment. So the first one is to swap criticising with sharing. So what is criticising? So criticising is where you attack someone's personality, where you exaggerate, so you say, okay, you're always doing this, you never listen to me, you're lazy, you're controlling, you're selfish. When you kind of make those sweeping statements, when you judge someone's personality, someone's character, this is criticising. And criticising feeds a negative energy into the home, it can lead to resentment to be built, it doesn't feel good, and it's not going to help have a loving, positive environment in the home. However, it is important to share. It is important to share when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling annoyed, when we're feeling irritated. We can't just ignore that because then resentment will build and that's even worse. So it's about sharing it in a way that's going to help you move forward together as a couple, that's going to help you progress and rather than go over the same things again and again and trigger each other or put each other down, you're going to get things resolved and move forward. So the first step in this is focusing on the behaviour. What is the behaviour that you really want to change? So it could be, for example, when you leave the clothes on the floor, when you don't pack the dishwasher, when you interrupt me when I'm working, when you're always on your phone, that kind of thing. So we wouldn't want to say always though, so when you're on your phone. So you focus on the specific behaviour. And then you would say how it makes you feel. So when you do this, I feel frustrated, angry, hurt, upset, whatever it is that you feel. It's very important to not say, I feel that. Because when we say, I feel that, we're then sharing a thought rather than a feeling. Now that's fine, but if we really want people to listen, then it's best to share how it makes us feel. And definitely we want to avoid saying, you make me feel, you make me feel like this, you make me feel like that. Because when someone feels attacked, when someone feels criticised, a wall goes up, they switch off, they don't listen to you, and that's not going to be very helpful to you. So that's the second part, sharing how it makes you feel. And then the third part is what you want instead. And this is where a lot of couples miss what they really would like to have instead of this behaviour. So this is where you can really help your relationship to take leaps and bounds forwards. Now you may think it may be obvious, in some cases it may be. Don't leave your clothes on the floor, I'd really appreciate it if you could put them in the washing basket. Something like that, that is very simple. But other things may not be so simple. So it's clear and it's helpful to just say, I would really love it if you would do this, or I would really appreciate it if you could change this. So it's these three things, sharing instead of criticising, that can help you keep your relationship close and happy and intact. Because no one wants to be around someone that's criticising them and then it can cause defensive behaviour and then the defensive behaviour can lead to angry outbursts or angry silences and it just escalates. So that's the first communication tip I wanted to share with you. The second is agreeing to disagree. So John Gottman, one of the most famous marriage experts out there, studied couples and he got all of their arguments and really looked into detail. Could of the main arguments that couples have, could they actually be resolved? And guess what percentage he found that could or couldn't be resolved? 70% of marital arguments are non-resolvable. That is what he came up with. Because we have different upbringings, different work histories, different masculine female energy, all of this creates a difference in our feelings, our experiences, our judgments. So he said most of the time 
You just have to say, okay, we agree to disagree and not keep on trying to push your point. This is what a lot of people do. They try to keep pushing their point. And the truth is we can never talk someone into our way of thinking. People will think what they want to think. You can't convince someone by keep repeating and repeating or finding other ways to say the same things in different words. It's just a waste of time and energy. And when we accept someone, when we accept their feelings, accept their opinions, even if we don't agree, when we hold them and let them know it's okay, it's one of the most loving things that we can do for each other. Remembering that, is it more important to be right in your relationship or is it more important to be happy? And most people will choose happiness over being right any day. And the third communication tip that I really wanted to share today is to state your desires instead of making demands. Now this is a really simple thing to apply, but a lot of us probably think, yeah, well, I don't demand anything. But when we tell somebody to do something like pick that up, do that, leave me alone, like it just creates a bit of negativity. Telling somebody what to do, telling them what not to do, it can sound a bit off-putting, shall we say. So, but when we share our desires, they're more likely to help us and support us. So sharing your desires can be things like saying, I would really appreciate it if you would help me do this. It would mean so much to me if we put away our phones by eight o'clock this evening and just watched a movie and cuddled together. Or it would really make me happy if I could do my yoga this morning in peace. Or it would really give me so much joy if I was able to read my book tonight. Or if I was just able to have a lion in bed or whatever it is. So really making sure that you are sharing what you would like in a loving, supportive way for you and for the relationship because then they're more likely to support you and then you support them. And this is just gonna really help during this un unusual and uncertain times through staying at home together in this social distancing and isolation period. So those are three of my main communication tips of 18. And if you have any questions for me, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. From my heart to yours, take care.